Hey guys, happy new year, 2024. The last 12 months went by in the blink of an eye. It was just like a snap of a finger. It was crazy. Uh, hopefully your 2023 was really good. Uh, mine was pretty decent in reflection. That's what this whole YouTube video is about. It was a stream that I did on January 1st, just covered all of my results over the last year through both poker and streaming. Some decent successes and some minor failures. So a little bit of a kind of a plateauish year, but in also progressive year. I don't know. I think you guys will get my point once you check out the video. Uh, it's a really good one. People always respond really positively to these reviews. Um, I think there's a lot that you can do through simply looking through Sharkscope, um, whether that be through game selection or understanding what kind of games you can beat and when you, ones you can't and understanding where some of the variance is coming from. And we cover all of that in the, in the stream and in this YouTube video today. I think you guys will really, really enjoy it. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Maybe there's something that you think that I missed as far as looking at my results or maybe as far as my game selection goes maybe something that you guys have succeeded in yourselves or something that you didn't consider while watching the stream and then most importantly i want to hear your new year's resolutions particularly if it's poker related but if you just want to share something going on in your personal life i'm all years i'm always interested in what people who watch my my content have to say about their poker journey and then their just life's journey in general whether you're a recreational or professional it doesn't matter to me um in the meantime real quick just before we get started in the video i'm going to share something if you guys want 25 bucks in acr money no deposit required zero deposit required i have an offer for anybody who's new to america's card room slash the winning poker network that's the thing this only qualifies for new players if you're not a new player just skip to the stream uh where we get to the juicy stuff but if you're a new player here's a few steps to follow to get yourself 25 bucks in free poker money once again no deposit required i'm giving it to you from my own hands, all right? So first step, go to americascardroom.eu or you can just Google ACR Poker. It'll be the first link on Google. Hit the sign up button. Once again, it'll be like the first thing on their site. It'll say sign up. And then it'll ask you to use a promo code on the sign, sign up. Use DRAMA. I think it's case sensitive, so make sure you do it in caps just to be safe. D-R-A-M-A, -A -A, D-R-A-M-A. Uh, that's what a link me to you so you cannot qualify for this 25 bucks if you do not put in promo code drama that's very very important download the acr poker client it's really really simple it's just an exe file and then once you're on the acr poker client on your profile make sure you fill out all your personal info in the cashier section your your name and address and all that kind of stuff so that support can verify who you are and you're a legit player then once you've done that the last step is to just DM me. You can do that through any social media platform. I'll leave links down below to my Twitter, my Instagram. You can even whisper me on twitch.tv slash dramatic DJ. Um, and once you've given me your username, I will clear it with support to make sure that everything's legit. And then I will send you 25 bucks to play poker money with. It'll take about 24 hours, sometimes longer, depending on how things are going with support. Uh, yeah, just easy, easy, easy. And I will say, you do not need to DM me through several different platforms, okay? Just because I don't reply to you guys instantly doesn't mean you need to email me and then phone my mother and then send me some snail mail. Just, I see the DM, I'll clear it with support. Sometimes it takes one to two days. And once it does clear, I'll send you 25 bucks. It's easy peasy, simple as that. Once again, the rule is you must be new to ACR Poker. You cannot be a pre-existing user. And we can find out if you are a pre-existing user, so do not cheat the system. This is for new players only. Okay, anyway, enough of me yapping. There's already two hours of yapping coming up. Really good content though. I suggest you guys just like, you know, put it on 2X speed while you're doing some other chores or playing some video games or what have you. You'll get your values worth. And then of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's it for me. Enjoy the video. I'll see you at the end. Okay, so some of this is going to be slightly disjointed. I tried to make a reasonable game plan for how I want to cover this stream and my year and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I found some interesting th little tidbits, um, some things that I was expecting. And I assume, given your guys' input, maybe we'll learn a few other things on top of that that I hadn't noticed beforehand. Um, it's going to be a little bit of back and forth. 
But, uh, oh, geez. I really wanted to show you guys this, which was my stats, my PT4 stats from December of last year, and then go over the yearly stats, but it looks like that's not still loading. My PT4 has been pretty crappy. Okay, so we won't worry about that then. So yeah, um, let's, let's go over things. Firstly, let's go over 2022 and how that looked. Um, just as a quick refresher, in case you guys don't remember or you didn't see my last year's yearly review. Uh, we grossed about 17K in total profit, but I netted about 30 as I had sold um, 6K in stakings um, stakes. So that's the amount that I sold and then also the amount that I returned. So that's like the actual net. And I got about 6K in rake back. So that's a pretty insane amount of rake back because I got about a third of that this year. I'm guessing it's because I played less sites. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I played less sites and I played a higher average buy-in. Um, majority of 2022's profit was from one month, which is October. I made 22K that month. Finished third in a 3,300K for about five and a half grand. Finished first in a 33 PKO. There's a two-day event on party for 8.7K. And then I uh, chopped second place in a streamer free roll on ACR for 8.6K. Um, if you guys remember that, I chopped it with... Oops, shit. I chopped it with um, S the P, 1975. Another stormer. I'm bricking on the name, on the, the number part, but S the P. That was like the one where um, it was a hyper tournament, in, hyper turbo tournament until... There was 20 left, and then the blind structure just disappeared, and we were playing the same blinds um, all the way to the end. It was like big blind 6K or something, and it took like eight hours <laughs> to get from 20 down to a winner. Um, and I made that sick bluff with four high. Yeah, it was fun. So that was a, that was a crazy month. Um, but that was where majority of my profit come, came from that month, uh, that year. Also, global doesn't have rake back. Could have made a difference. Yes, for sure. That was half over half my volume this year. So that's definitely a big one for sure. I remember that free roll. That was like 12 hours long. Yeah, which is crazy because it was a hyper tournament, right? It should have been five hours long, you know? That was an odd one. Yeah, it was odd. It was very, very odd. Um, I had like a 30% three bet percentage. It was crazy. And managed to get it heads up. And I think S the P and I, I think he had like 150 big blinds and I had like 110 big blinds or something like that. Like it was crazy. Um, but that was huge. That was a huge, huge month. Um, so more or less, uh, because of that month, that's where my profit came from that year is just having one really run good month. I made a little bit of money here and there too, but the first five months of 2022, I was a losing player um, until I got into the coaching for profit group with beef is brian fight um where he gave me basically unlimited coaching for a share of my profits and we started that in june of 2022 um and that agreement ended september of this year or maybe it was august of this year i can't quite remember but um yeah so i was definitely just like chasing my losses for a lot of 2022 um, having a few profitable months here and there after I joined the group and then October really just like skyrocketed to help me kind of get myself back into a profitable zone, which is why my, my gross profit was not very big. <clears throat> Still a huge improvement from the previous year though. The previous year I was break even, if you guys remember that 2021, I think I made like two grand total. So completely break even year. And then 2020, as we all know, was my biggest losing year in my career where I lost, like, I don't even know. 50, 60, 70 grand. I'm not sure. It was a lot. There's so many big free rolls that year. Yeah, ACR was trying to make a big, like, mainstream push. Um, sponsoring a lot of non-poker streamers. So they did a lot of, like, really insane free rolls. Had the BBZ, uh, BBZ seminars for a month, mainly to get bundles cheap. Watched a few of the BFIZ ones in the library. He's good, man. He's very unique. The man knows what he's doing. Super cool to listen to. Might grab the seminars every now and then. Just go back through their library. The BBC seminars seminars are really good. Okay. Um, so that was my 2022. So profitable. A step up from the previous two years, but certainly not livable. Um, you know, I was able to do poker full-time in 2022 because of my 
streaming because of my streaming career. So I was making a decent income from the ACR Stormers program. Uh, just for anybody who has not heard what that is, it's basically like an affiliate program where we recruit new signups and we also get um, paid based off of our watch time. So how many viewers watch per hour? And it's a tiered system, goes all the way up to three grand a month if you hit uh, 10,000 hours of watch time per month on your channel. Um, and I think I averaged around 7,000 hours a month, somewhere around there. So I was, I was averaging about two grand a month ish. That was like the second best tier. Um, so that kept me afloat when I was having like those really, really bad months. So last year, I think we made around after the net, like 56 K 57 K something like that. Okay. A month, especially when you convert it into Canadian, it's like, you know, 70 grand good middle-class living, you know? Um, but certainly an unsatisfying year, all the same, right? Um, and a TLDR, real quick, of 2023 is I more or less made the same amount of money, but context is very, very important. I think it was still a huge, um, progressively positive year for me um, with context, which is what we're going to cover up moving forward here. So, 2023... This is my total. I spent 300 grand in buy-ins, actually a little bit less than the previous year, 327K in cashes for a total gross profit of 27.6K. Um, Alex buys 10% of my action, um, of my daily action. So that's, uh, yeah, of my daily action. So um, he made 2.2K off of me. And I also buy 10% of his action. He's mostly a cash game grinder, so we play different games. And I basically broke even off of him. Uh, I made about 500 bucks. Um, there was a period in the year, I think it was during scoop of this year, where I sold a ton of action for this, all the series that happens during scoop across every site and made about 7,800 off of that for those swings. And I made about 2K in rake back. So for a net profit total of 34.8K, we'll round it up and say 35K. Um, Rake back is so low this year compared to last year, um, mostly because I've been playing on more sites. So obviously um, the rake back's not gonna look as good when um, you have your volume so dispersed more or less evenly. Not only that, but I play on a site that has no rake back, um, global online, and that accounts for like 55% of my volume. And when that happens, like I'm just going to make significantly less rake, right? Uh, in 2022, I don't think I started playing on global until July or August of that year. So um, majority of my rake back probably came from before then. So overall, profitable year. And my gross profit was, what, 50% more this year than it was last year. So in that context, that is awesome. <laughs> it's really good. Um, also, I think I might want to add too that like most of my profit is not coming from all the action that I sold like in 2022. So this actually comes from, you know, my own achievements basically more or less. Um, so those are honestly, in my opinion, like important contextual aspects to add that um, I can pat myself on the back for. Obviously not a satisfying number for me not even close, especially considering that last year, my goal was to be making $10 a game in 2023. I didn't even make close to that. I think I made $3 a game. We'll, we'll go over that in a minute. Um, but um, still huge leaps forward compared to the previous year and, and a huge leap forward compared to the year before that. I'll show you guys my um, spreadsheet really quick where I keep track of everything just to kind of add more context. Give me a minute here. Mm. Just want to bring up my 2022 spreadsheet to kind of just give you guys a, a solid idea of what, what it is that I'm trying to trying to say here. While also not sharing too much stuff. That um, I might not want to share. Okay. So this is my spreadsheet from 2022. 
So December, we made a little bit of profit. November, we broke even. October, as you guys know. Oh, shit. I'm not showing the right part here. October, as you guys know here, was my biggest winning month in years. Broke even in September. Solid profit in October. Or, uh, August, sorry. Reasonable profit in July. Reasonable profit in June. Break even in May. Losing in April. Meh profit in March. Break even to losing in February. And a huge losing month in January. So, pretty mediocre um, stats overall, numbers overall. Very inconsistent. Um, more or less got to the point where, as you guys, like I said before, we got towards the end of the year. We were really only going to make probably like 10K in 2022 if it wasn't for my big October month where we just had a few just massive, massive scores to get me up an extra 20 grand and, you know, recover from a little bit of those losses. Um, 2023 is a whole different ball game. So, yes, we made the same amount as the year before, but... Let's just share how consistent we're being here. So this is, doesn't, it says November, but it's actually December. Uh, December, we made 7,500 bucks. November, we made 25. October, we made 55. September, we made 25. August, we made 18. July, we made five. Broke even in June. So our first, we, we, we all, our last losing month was in May. Our last losing month was in May. Right? Was that seven months ago? Huge profitable April. That was my second best month of the year. That was from... <clears throat> um, we can talk about it now. I didn't really bring it up at the time because I wasn't sure if I could. Uh, the Triton Challenge that ACR Stormers do where we all compete to get to go and play Triton that's staked by ACR and Phil Nagy can buy 50% of the action and you get 50k instantly before you start playing. I got um, really close to winning the challenge and then we know that um, what's his name? Poker and PJs got disqualified. He won the challenge but then it came out that he was cheating and he got fired and disqualified from the challenge and me and the top four finalists were kind of like re-entered back into contention to win it and we all basically took a deal and um, made some swaps and stuff. So I ended up getting a little bit of piece of the action and uh, making about seven grand off of it, even though I was swinging a little bit. I'm not gonna get into too much of the details, but that's basically what happened. So I did more or less earn it because I was performing really, really well um, in that challenge. I was like right in contention until Poker and PJs had like a really, really good session in one of the challenges to the point that like it blew us all out of the water and there was no way any of us were gonna catch up. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that was my second biggest winning month of the year um, from that challenge. 4,500 in March. Um, our second losing month in February, minus 2,000. And plus 3,700 in January. So as you can see, way more consistent than the previous year. Less month by month swings, huge difference. Yeah, huge difference. Huge, huge, huge difference. Um, a huge, huge difference in consistency. So this isn't, I'm just like running, sun running all year long. Like I'm just being way more consistent. So there's a huge amount of growth there to be said here. That's why I think context is really important. I, I really don't like when people go such and such is up or down. Look at their shark scope. It's like, let's look at, let's look at the context first. I, th uh, I think context, it's, it's judging a book by its cover, right? So you could say that I've made no growth between 23 and 20 or 22 and 23, because I've made the exact same amount of money um, or only a little bit more this year. But in reality, the growth has been huge because I've been significantly more consistent. I've had two losing months this entire year, which I don't think I can say that for any year uh, previous to this one in my career. Um, and then this big losing month here, May. Um, so I actually grossed minus 11.5K um i decided i was like my confidence was at an all-time high so i decided i was going to take a lot of shots and play um 
play uh, Scoop. Um, and we'll see that in my Shark Scope graph as well, that like I'm down a ton, when in reality I'm not, because I sold a bunch of action. Um, personally, privately, sold just a ton of action that month. And May didn't work out for me. I felt like I played really well. Um, my mental was pretty good. I wasn't tilted. I don't think I was playing all that bad at all. I think my win rate even reflects that. Um, for some reason, PT4 is just not working for me right now. I might have messed with it a little too much. But uh, it just, yeah, things were not working out. It was like a primarily big field kind of a grind that month. And it really kicked me in the butt um, overall. So really, uh, really, really bad month. But, you know, who knows? Maybe if I just kind of run, continued with what I was doing, stayed the path, maybe I would have actually had a winning month there and maybe we'd only have one winning one losing month in 2023 i don't know but yeah there's a break even month right there i think i had one only one break even month as well right i consider break even plus or minus 1000 so that's kind of my my threshold considering my average buying i think that's fair yeah i think that was that was my only break even month so two losing months and one break even month is pretty unreal i i think that's that's an insanely high level of consistency that I don't think a lot of people in the poker space can really say that they have. Um, I really, I, I, I think most people, even better poker players than me, have much swingier um, months overall. And I think that's because of game selection. I'm, I'm playing games overrolled. That's a big one too. So um, I just don't get tilted really. I get tilted maybe in the moment, but... Um, Tilt never carries over day to day for me ever. So, yeah, context. Context is huge. <clears throat> Don't judge a book by its cover, chat. Um, what else do I want to do? Let's look over shark scopes. So, I prepared a few shark scopes to look at some of that game selection that I was talking about. Uh, what's up, Sarsec? What's going on? So, what did I want to look at first? So here's my initial graph right here. And this is everything combined with no filters whatsoever. Just everything that I played in 2023. I played 10,700 10, games at a $23 average buy-in. I only made a dollar per game at 5% ROI and only made 16.9K. As you guys saw there from the spreadsheet that I showed you, that's obviously not true. Um, as I sold a lot of action and most of my run bad is from this dip right here which was all the tournaments that i was playing pre-scoop during scoop and a little bit post scoop where i was just playing more or less big fields somewhere around triple to quadruple my average buy-in um had a little bit of success here and there june was not good to me as you guys saw as well um there's a little bit of variance there but i was also right in the middle of moving i moved from vancouver to edmonton in june and then i also got sick i got sick with the flu for like two weeks and i tried to play during through my flu when i really i should have just taken the time off and so june was just like a really shitty month for me as well so and that that all explains it right you can see it right here and you can see it right here obviously like this huge dip um my my, my graph was actually looking not too too bad until i decided you know what i want to play scoop and then went a um, little bit of break even here. That's in August. So I took some time off to play a live series in Edmonton. So that probably explains that as well. But um, overall consistent um, when we're playing within my average buy-in. And you guys are like, what do you mean? Your graph looks like shit. Well, let's filter it. it. Looks much better. Still a little too flat. More flat than I'd like it to be. But significantly less swingy. This is when I filter it to small average field sizes. Um, so in other words, not playing scoop, <laughs> more or less, or not playing Sundays to some degree as well. Um, when I just played my normal daily average grind, uh, we were almost tripling, almost tripling my ROI, not quite 2.6X or whatever. Uh, and then I think if I filtered it out, as well to 
a lower average buy-in. Let me see. Yeah, it's this one at the top here, which is a more complete picture of my year's grind. So this was the small average field size that I just showed you, which counts for 8,500 games, so about 85%-ish. And then this is just, regardless of field size, all games below 33s. Um, so, you know, 97, 98, or 90, 90, 97 to 95% of my, of my grind, it looks even better. Even more consistent here. Um, and I think the average field size is still pretty low, right? Yeah. 100, 119 average average entries. So just really, really, really consistent. 20% um, ROI, so I was making $4 a game. Um, when I wasn't playing high stakes, basically. Um, so I'm, I'm basically not a winning player above 44s right now. And that's honestly fine, because there's just so much good, juicy poker that I can make good money below that average buy-in. Um, and I think there's even more for me to, to achieve um, at this average buy-in as well moving forward. So we're not really gonna move too much. Um, I'll take some shots here and there, dependent upon different situations, who knows what. Um, but more or less, we're on the right track and this graph proves it. So I'm, I'm not a losing player. I'm definitely a consistent player. There's just this, some aspects to game selection I need to work out. And there's also just some variance, I think, as well. And I'll prove that as we go further. There was another thing I wanted to filter out that I hadn't added. Oh, yeah, let's try this. I just want to see what it looks like. I have no idea what it'll look like, if it changes, if it's going to be a big difference or not. But um, I want to exclude satellites. Okay, so not a not a huge improvement. Um, my average profit for game goes up a little bit, and my ROI goes up a little bit, but it's more or less the same. It's more or less the same. <clears throat> so okay. So that's huge, right? Context, context, context. Now let's take a look at like some of the things that we're losing at, because as you can see, there's some red here. Um, a huge chunk of my losses from this year came from big fields, as we know, right? That's all scoop and moss and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I believe the average field size is significantly bigger. Yeah, so 639 average entries compared to here. It's 119 average entries. So literally, literally 5x my average field size when I play above 33, uh, above 300 entries. Sorry. So more or less during series games and um, Sundays. I would say when I'm playing, when I'm, my results are minus 10% ROI, there's, there's some variance in there involved. Um, I, th I do find it a little bit interesting that it looks like we make some of our money back here as my game improved. As my game improved, like the quality of my play improved, um, we started making some of that money back, right? So a little bit of variance and a little bit of skill. Bit of a skill issue, a bit of a variance issue, you know? Great insight. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, no problem, Stocky. I, I enjoy sharing this with you guys. So there's another, there's, there's, a, there's a context dependent situation right there. Um, what is this one? Oh yeah, this was this was a revelation which we had talked about in previous um, previous situations here. Series and Sunday is always going to be high level of volatility. Never realize your ROI if you never bank. Yes, yes. Big T, is that you, Sexton? Um, yeah. So I filtered out Sundays in this graph here, and when we don't play Sundays. My graph, especially towards the last half of the year, is a really nice, like this, this is, this is nice right here. Really, really, really nice. Just nice and gradual. Little, little, little bit of plateauing. I mean, that's just part of the journey. You plateau, especially in poker. Regardless of field size, you're going to have some volatile moments here and there. That's just how the math works. But generally speaking, like, looks really, really good. Um, ROI goes up as well. 
Could you show overall graph your whole career? Would be good to visualize your progress since you started. Um, maybe I have my um shark scopes all filtered out to June of last year. I I, I don't really I here's for my own mental. I don't want to dwell on that. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of talking about it through therapy, but um, 2020 was the worst year of my of my life professionally and to some degree personally as well. Um, I lost uh, so much money. I do not want to visualize that moment of my life any more than I already do. And um, so going over that with you guys is just not something I think I'm emotionally equipped to do. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I'd rather just reflect in the short term and um, look towards the future. But there's a lot of growth. Time to look forward. Yep, for sure. Can't dwell on the past, but good to work through it. Yep, for sure, exactly. Yo, what's up, Sexton? Okay, gotcha. We'll give Sexton a, a mod. <clears throat> Even though, you know, he doesn't have to mod. We're still going to mod him all the same. Actually, how do I mod people? I haven't modded somebody in a long time. Mod big T813. There we go. <clears throat> okay um where was i right so um really consistent sundays without sundays like we're, we do very 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 well and then if we filter to just sundays oh it's so ugly <laughs> it hurts it hurts my soul there, there's very little upward trend what is this from I finished fifth in a Sunday scrimmage. Oh yeah. And a reg by the name of Child of Jesus made the biggest ICM punt I've seen all year long and sucked out on me. I'll never forgive him for it. Ever. That guy can go suck on a lemon. Um that was the 218.75k. Yeah, fit fifth for 4.2k. Anyway. <laughs> um yeah, Sundays is have been brutal to me this year. Brutal. Minus 23k. Minus 23K just from Sundays alone. It's the only day of the week that I'm not profitable. Um, we can look at each day individually if you guys want to prove it to me, or you can just take my word for it. But I'm profitable every day of the week except for Sundays. Um, and like, like Big T was saying in the chat there, um, volatility, the volatility of huge fields, right? It's hard to really know if like... I was just like running that bad. I, I would assume that I was like, how is it that I'm profitable every day of the week, but Sunday, I would assume it's just, you know, Sundays being Sundays more or less. Um, so that's a big, big chunk of me missing out on profit this year as well is having very, very few profitable Sundays. Um, I remember a lot of break even Sundays. Yeah. And th this will kind of prove it right. Like, we didn't lose a whole ton the last half of the year because I changed up my my schedule significantly where I was just like so sick of losing on Sunday. I, I would have, you know, Monday th through Friday, I would kill it, take Saturday off to re recharge and then come in Sunday and lose all the profit that I made the week before. And it was just like so frustrating. So I just started kind of not playing the big fields anymore and just playing small field shit to minimize those losses and that's kind of what this is. I mean, we still lost a little bit, but it just wasn't as bad as, as here, as you can see. Um, I think I'm kind of turning that around a little bit where I'm going to go back to big fields, but what I'm going to do is just like lower the average buy-in significantly, more or less. <clears throat> Last year on Sundays, I made 2x more money than all weekdays combined in 2022. This year, I made 2x more money on weekdays than all my Sundays this year combined. <laughs> it's so fucking wild. Like... Proof. There's proof for you right there. It's just Sundays are a highly, highly, highly volatile day. Just like, um, you know, Scoop is a highly, highly, highly volatile series. You know, a small percentage of people make a boatload of money during Scoop and WCoop. And a large percent of people, whether they're good or not, lose a boatload of money during Scoop and WCoop. Um, and I fit into that, into that majority. Um, 
you know, whether or not you thought I was, I had the aptitude to actually win during those series is, you know, that's something that you can debate me, debate with me if you want, I suppose. But more or less, like that is a volatile swing right there compared to how consistent the rest of my graph looks. Even that, even that is more consistent than what this is. And this little dip here as well is in February where I put too much focus into a Triton challenge and tried to play Triton challenge the same time I was, that I was playing poker and it cost me when in reality I should have separated the two. But anyway, regardless. Um, okay, so there's that fun revelation that Sunday's kicked my ass this year. Um, and I hope that that turns around. We had a nice little Sunday score on the last day of December for 1.4K. That was nice. Nice way to end the year. So hopefully we can have a few more nice Sundays in 2024. We'll see. You only get maybe 50 Sundays compared to 150 to 200 weekdays. And with 4X the field size, I think weekday results are the real representation for how you're doing, where your skill is at. I think that's... <laughs> only because of my ego. I think that's a fair representation. Yes, absolutely. I agree. Whereas if I was losing on weekdays, I would say that that's not, that's not true. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, obviously that makes sense, right? Way more, way more. We have literally 3.5 X. You can see right here between weekdays and the Sundays. We have literally 3.5 X the volume of Sundays and we're up on, on weekdays. Um, so yeah, this is probably the truest representation of what my, ROI is so we're an 18% ROI. We made 40k on weekdays. Um, so still a lot to a lot to grow from there. Um, I'm sure if I even filtered this out to a low average buy-in as well. Um, so we got rid of some of the shot takes that I played, this graph would look even better. I mean, I, I guess we can do that right now unless I already did that. Let me see. No, I didn't. Okay, let's let's take a look. I could be completely wrong, but let's take a look. <clears throat> Does that look right? Yeah. Okay, so we actually made less profit, but um, a little bit higher ROI and a little bit higher average profit per game. And it does look more consistent as well compared to when we add in higher buy-ins. So perhaps an even fair representation right here, 24%. Because the higher buy-ins, most of the higher buy-ins that I'm playing are shot takes. They're big field MTTs with nice scores or whatever. Um, anything above 33 is more or less, more or less. There's always exceptions, but. Love this. And what do you off stream? What do you do off stream in day-to-day -day life to improve? I mean, studying is big, right? Getting sleep is a big one. Meditating. Also, like, I think decompressing is really huge too like having things to do to get your mind off of things. I read every day and I read fiction. I don't really read a lot of nonfiction. For some reason, these days especially, like everyone wants to read self-help books. I think that can be kind of exhausting on the brain, especially when you do something as voluminous as poker. Like it's, it's good to have something to escape to. And reading for me is like so therapeutic and, and meditative. It really helps me clear my mind in the morning. And I think that actually helps my game. But yeah, studying, obviously. Studying is a big one. Um, and being like self-reflective. Like I'm all year, I've been like trying to tweak my game selection over and over and over again. Still haven't got to figure it out, but it's significantly better than it was two years ago. Whereas two years ago, I was just kind of clicking. Just like, oh, this is a cool, uh, this is a cool prize pool. This is a cool prize pool. Like, I like this site, <laughs> you know? When in reality, like, you got to be a, a lot more... Um, specific okay um what else did i want to look at that i added here <clears throat> when i go below 33s and above a 300 average field size i'm winning well that's what my notes said so swingy small sample but clearly like in the low stakes i'm still I'm still doing well here. Um, bit swingy, but sample size is everything, right? When we go above 33s, regardless of field size, um, I can't remember if we covered this already, but I'm losing. Once again, kind of interesting that in the last half of the year, it was less losing and more break-even slash profitable. 
Um, whereas like this is just a straight downward spiral. So obviously like my game has improved quite a bit. Um, I want to see what's the average field size here. So like medium size. So this has kind of got Sundays involved and whatnot. Slight bit of volatility, but game's improved. And the graph slowly improved here. Reading helps me decompress at night, post session as well. Yeah, for sure. I get that. I don't like reading at night only because my brain's already like so exhausted that um, I can't, my reading comprehension just like goes out the window at night. Um, to the point that like I have to reread the book the next day. So it just feels like a waste of time for me. But I can see that for sure. Everybody's different, right? I, I, I love to start my day with a coffee reading my book. That's, that's what I love to do. Um... And once again, fiction chat. I highly recommend fiction over nonfiction. But that's just me. Um, so yeah, um, clearly I'm not quite good enough to be beating those higher stakes games. Um, above 33s. <clears throat> Where the average, by the way, is 75 bucks. So there's a lot of 109s that I'm playing um, that I'm probably not beating. More or less. I also thought this was pretty interesting. Uh, Big T and I had covered this before. But I looked at it again today. Um, just specifically PKOs, bounty tournaments. Well, bounty tournaments in general. Uh, I do not do well in PKOs. So I'm clearly um, missing the ball in this aspect of MTTs. And I think moving forward, I either need to take one of two options, which is to learn how to get better at PKOs, because clearly I don't know what I'm doing, or stop playing them entirely, which is kind of tough to do in this day and age, because most of the fish are attracted to PKOs. Um, we won't look at this. I'm not going to look at this seriously. It's a. It wasn't a PKO. It was a bounty tournament um, that I won in October. Where it like basically played like a freeze out because the bounties weren't really the the KOs, the knockouts weren't really they didn't play a role. Um they accounted for a small portion of the buy-in on global. They weren't actual progressive knockout tournament. Um so yeah, anyway, regardless, whether we we include this or not, uh I'm a losing player in bounties. So that's a huge, huge, huge leak in my game that I need to hold myself responsible for because it does account for a good chunk of my my uh, volume, about a quarter of my volume. So yeah, either get better at them or not play them at all. And obviously I'd rather just get better at them, right? Um, I think we covered this already, right? Below 33s. This is what it looks like. So we're good there. And... Um, I talked to, to Big T about this earlier in the stream or before the stream today um, to filter out multi-day tournaments. So that's where they consider, they, they put it in the satellite category because effectively day ones are satelliting into day twos more or less um, from a simplistic standpoint, which makes sense because that's what they do in party poker. They'll have phase tournaments where you can go into day two or you can just directly buy into day two for a bigger portion of the buy-in. So it makes sense. Um... There's a lot of volatility in phase tournaments. That's why I've kind of avoided a lot of phase tournaments over the last six to eight months. Um, but it's a lot more consistent here when we don't have we don't have those games in our schedule. So I'm kind of thinking, with the exception of some good ACR phase tournaments, I might I might quit out on these entirely. Like I noticed there's a 55 500k on stars for like their New Year's Eve series or whatever. And I'm like, ah, man, it's so expensive. I, don't, I just don't know if I've, I want to get involved, you know? And looking at this graph, I kind of feel like I will commit to that in not getting involved. PKOs have to bank and not get second, third, two. So volatility is even higher in PKOs. Right. Yeah. Um, in tournaments where like, you know, if you're not getting top three or top four consistently, like it's a problem. PKOs, it's like if you're getting top three, that's still not good enough. And that's a huge problem, right? People don't realize they're actually like pretty volatile style of games. I think a lot of people think that it's low variance because you get some of your buy-in back. When in reality, like 
because of the fact that you're gambling so much more, it actually is like a very swingy format. Um, a lot of the PKOs though I, that I play are small fields. Let, let me just double check that. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's true. Um, where was it? Right here. Yeah, 183 average entries. So a little bit over my, my normal average. Um, so there's some big fields in there, but generally speaking, they're small fields. So I should still be able to beat them. Um, but obviously I'm not adjusting the way that I should. Um, probably I'm, I, I definitely calling off too light and I'm definitely playing in other ways, like too chippy V specific. Um, for instance, like having a big stack in position, I'm not like seeing enough flops, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see how, how things change this year. Um, and I'll probably in the meantime, try to go out of my way to play like a few less PKOs just until I feel like I'm a little more confident in cleaning my game up a bit. Okay. So that's, that's like, there's some, some interesting little tidbits there. Uh, Paul's nine. Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Happy New Year to you too. So this is kind of an interesting look just at the broad overview of me playing everything throughout the year. I just wanted to take a look at some of the more site-specific situations here. So these are all the sites that I play on. Um, I filtered out a few of the sites that I had small volume on. So like 888, I only played 150 games. There's a Canadian site. I only played like 90 games. Uh, stars.es I played like 30 games that kind of thing and whether I'm up or down on those I, th I think it's just kind of irrelevant um, because of how little volume I put there and to some degree you could say the same thing about GG and Chico where Chico I've only played 350 games GG I've, uh, I've played 500 but still something to look at all, all the same it's just just barely enough volume to me to for me to be like okay let's 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 take a quick look um, so kind of interesting my biggest volume is on global and that's where i'm up the most um this is 50 percent of my volume and i'm up 32k um pretty interesting that i kind of petered out here and that's since i've started adding uh, over the last two or three months i've started adding bigger field games but small buy-ins like bigger field 11 dollars average buy-in styles and i think perhaps my excitement in those bigger fields has actually sacrificed my focus in my bread and butter which is global so i need to fix that because global is a cash it's a money printing machine for me um so i need to give it kind of like the respect it deserves you know but regardless it's still my biggest money maker um My biggest loser is also my second biggest volume site, which is ACR. And there's a lot of questions I have for as to why that is. I had come to many different conclusions throughout the year and last year as to why I'm not winning the kind of money that I feel like I should be on ACR. And I don't even know if the, the answers I've made are correct. Um, I'm still questioning it. And there's something that I talked to Big T about earlier in the, in the day as well. But... Um, Dramatic DJ, happy new year and best of luck in 2024. Jenna Monas, appreciate it. You too, mate. So, <clears throat> I think probably some of the answers that I'm not exactly, these aren't exactly hills that I'm willing to die on because there's obviously something is up for me to put in this kind of volume and not be winning um, on a site that I feel like is a winning site, you know? Are you running under EV on ACR? That's what I wanted to look at on my PT4, um, but for whatever reason, it's not working. I wanted to see what my win rate was there. But I think honestly, what it comes down to is like, ACR is just tougher um, from a player perspective. There's just more regs on ACR compared to global. Um, I think also like what the small fields on ACR are actually tougher than on global like the, the the small fields on global which is like 95 percent of their games are really soft even the regs are bad the fish are enormously bad and on acr i just noticed there's just a lot more solid play um that was that was a big one um also on acr 
when your late reg is three times as long with unlimited re-entries, that also makes it tougher to win. So like uh, on party poker, where I'm also, I'm winning at a good clip, 24% ROI. That's like really, really solid. And oh my God, just like, look how beautiful that is. Once again, over the last six months, just so beautiful. Um, like on party poker, it's an hour, maximum two hours of late registration. And all their games are capped to um, maximum two re-entries. But a lot of them are one re-entry. And then on global, it's kind of the same thing. One to two hours maximum of late registration and no re-entries at all. So you get one bullet and that's it. And that actually benefits the fish quite a bit. Um, being able to, you know, giving, not giving regs the chance to, you know, retry their luck more or less. Um, and so I think, I think that's why ACR is just not working out for me too, too much. We're gonna go a little bit deeper into the ACR stuff later because i i did kind of i did filter it out a little bit earlier um but those are those are some reasons off the top of my head as to why i'm not exactly doing great there it is 2.7x my average field size so i'm playing more big fields there there's some volatility in that um a lot of pkos that i play are on acr as well so that probably plays plays a role how many games do you think you got on Bodog? Not many, not many. Less than 200. ACR also has longer blind levels. It's possible you are better at shorter stack play versus other eggs, and other eggs are better at deeper stack play than you. That would account for some of the differences in results. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. So a lot more post-flop play, more or less. I think that makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> um... Actually, I want to see here. How many final tables did I have? 98 and 36 wins. And then what about global? 700 final tables on global. So literally like 7x the final tables and almost triple the amount of banks. What about party poker where I'm winning there as well? Yeah, 2.5x the amount of final tables and 1.5x the amount of banks. So there's probably like, yeah, some short stack play ICM style stuff that I'm just better at. But then I'm, because I, I have noticed too, like, let's take a look here. What are my early, what is my early finish rate? 10%. So a bit high. Early finishes in global, 2% less. Right? So I'm getting a little bit outplayed early. Okay, early finishes on, on, but sample size is smaller, so it could be a variance thing. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, ACR just has more regs, is a, is a, is a big one, I think. Um, I think I am going to change up the way I approach playing ACR. I think, you know, I was trying to just play like those $11, 700 guarantees and, um, you know, a 21 PKO hyper like games with a really quick average game time. But I don't think the average game time actually makes that big of a difference compared to playing like the $11 Boski. Um, weirdly enough, just based on how frequently you get knocked out, but my profit is actually probably going to be bigger in the $11 Boski than in like an $11 700 guaranteed because of how capped it is, right? My edge on those, those big fields, low buying big fields, is going to be so huge that the average profit will just like skyrocket and make up for any variance that might be involved with playing big fields there, especially if I'm just like specific about my average buy-in, so... Not going to worry about playing like a 55 50k although i don't think they have any of those anymore but you know if i just make sure i play those like six dollar six k's and the eleven dollar ten k's and that kind of thing that happened daily 33 3k uh 33 30k instead of the eleven dollar 700s you know the 33 3k's um, i think the 33 3k's just probably aren't good for me at all most regs are pretty bad at short stack play too major league and a lot of regs games right right 
And deep stack definitely isn't my forte, that's for sure. So I think that's a big one. So that's what we're going to do moving forward in 2024 for sure, is, is fix that. Um, GG, I'm not going to look at I stopped playing on GG in August. I've never had a winning year in GG in my entire career. Uh, I'm considering coming back, though, and kind of doing the same thing that I've been doing with ACR. Um, which is like just, I won't play their small field stuff that's like super reg heavy anymore. Maybe I'll maybe I'll play their 11, I don't know what they have, like 11, they probably have an $11.20k or something daily. Um, that I would imagine is just like sick, sick, sick money for me. Um, as I progressively get better. Where my average profit per game is still going to be really, really good. Based on the edge that I have over that field. As long as I keep the average buy-in low so that the volatility isn't high. I think that's going to be kind of the trade-off that I make compared to playing like on global or on party poker where I'm fine with playing a 33 2k or whatever because they're just not that reg heavy. Um, but my my average profit per game is probably still going to be really nice. So like there's there's those kind of like specific differences in sight based on population that like we all kind of need to be conscious of and I perhaps I'm not conscious enough about that I'm, I'm going to work on in 2024 and, and hope that that makes a difference. And if anybody in the chat disagrees with me and wants to talk about it, I'm, I'm all ears because I think that's... Um, this is still something that I'm very much just like trying to process. Um, Poker Stars, I'm down the second most amount this year. Yeah, minus 8.3k. This I'm the least concerned about because of average entries. It's my highest out of all the sites that I'm playing. Um, most of my poker stars schedule comes from Sundays. Almost all of this is Sundays and coops, scoop and W coop. So I'm not really going to sweat it. Um, if people want to look at my poker stars shark shark scope and say, you're a losing player, you suck. Like, okay, think what you want. Um, my average field size is really high there. I'm not gonna, it's not something I'm. I'm going to sweat too hard, especially over such an incomplete sample as well. You know, um, put in 10 X the volume here at my current skill level. Who, who's to say that this graph continues to look this way. It could, could look completely different, completely different. Um, and once again, I am probably going to play more bigger fields on stars and see how it treats me. But once again, at a very low average buy-in to test that volatility, um, and still have it, I think, hopefully, affect my average profit per game in a positive way. Okay. Um, let me just look at my notes here. Oh, yeah. this I thought this was kind of interesting. So my... I just wanted to look at... The, so the site that I make the most amount of money on, as we know, is Global. Um... I am not on the leaderboard for profit, but I'm on the leaderboard for volume. So I played the 16th most amount of games on the site in 2023. And I just pulled up some of the names in like the top 10, top 15 game guys that I, I recognize who um, are higher up on the volume list and seeing, I wanted to see what their profit looked like, um, their average profit per game, et cetera. Um, so there's, there's Sex and Hardcastle there do, doing significantly better than me in every respect. So not too worried about him, but, um, I don't see Sexton all that much compared to a lot of these other guys. D Hilt, I see all the time. Flush me to tears. I see all the time. Mitch Meister, Patty Jean, Witch Doctor, Toast, Supreme Dream. I see these guys like daily, um, almost everywhere. And something that I thought was something worth kind of boosting my, my confidence here is that, um, despite all of these guys having, Maybe higher profits and higher volume. I have a higher profit per game and I have a higher ROI than most of them. So I have a 27% ROI. Who has higher? 26.6. Sexton has 26.8. And the Witch Doctor has 39. So I have the third highest ROI out of all these guys, out of the top 15 dudes. Um, this guy talks shit to me in the chat. And then I've filtered many, many times to give him the benefit of the doubt. And in every metric, I am more successful than him. So that was like kind of nice to, you know, be a little more confident about regardless, whatever it's competition. If this guy's watching, don't take it seriously, dude. Seriously. I know you're going to clip it and share it with your friends. So you guys can talk about how shitty I am. 
chill. All right. Um, yeah, just it was that was that was really nice to see. You know, maybe their their average buy in is a little bit higher than me because they're playing some fifty fives and stuff. But even when I filtered it out, so we had relatively the same average buy in, I was still doing performing better than them. Um, that was really nice. Thirty nine over almost eight k games. Yeah, Witch Doctor. He's very very consistent. Very very consistent. He's also from Edmonton. I think this is the only site he plays on. I could be wrong about that, but um, didn't Dream get bopped? What do you mean bopped? Supreme Dream got bopped. What was he like a bot? He talked. He talked to me on on one time. Said he was a fan of my stream. Um, Toast puts in crazy volume. I see him everywhere on ACR as well. Um, and his stats kind of represent the way that I feel like he plays, to be honest with you. So yeah, I don't know. That was just a confidence booster. It's kind of irrelevant, more or less. But I thought it was nice that, like, I'm not just, like, playing everything for the sake of playing it. I'm playing games that fit within my means, and I feel like I'm going to get the best bang for my buck. And it paid off more or less around where I wanted. And I am more or less just as good as any of these other guys here. Um, with a few exceptions. Like Mitch Meister is way better than me. Sexton's way better than me. Um, but the rest of these guys, like, I'm on their level or better. Um, it's not just luck as to why I'm doing okay here. He hasn't played in a month. Oh, wow. Didn't know that. Yeah, I wonder why. And what was this? Why did I filter this out? Oh, I think I just did a simple, like, let's look at all the sites when I'm playing below 33s. I think that's all this was. So even when I do that on, on, on ACR, I'm more or less, in all things considered, break even. I mean, down 100 buy-ins, but over a large sample, we're not, we're not, we're not, up, uh, we're not down that much. Um, Chico, 300 games, who cares? Stars, I'm actually up a little bit. But if we're going to say this is break even, this is most certainly break even, plus a thousand bucks. Um, not the greatest sample either. So, like, you know, I might, you know, 2024, the theme of 2024 might be just like, I need to stay in my lane. You know, probably benefit me to stay in my lane. And not try to shot take too hard. Um, and if I do, I need to be very, very, very intentional in the shots that I take. I can't just like be looking to gamble, despite my name being Dramatic Degen, you know? So there's there's something there. And then I wanted to look at WPN, right? Our biggest losing site. See if there's anything that I can find out here. Did you check Chico Network? Fields are small, American Heavy, and higher wise on regs. It's a good jam IMO. Um, I have, but I have not put in enough volume for really no good discernible reason. But I am definitely going to be playing a lot more Chico in 2024, for sure. <clears throat> but I, I'm pretty, like, Chico accounted for literally, like, less than 3% of my volume last year. And I probably should account for, like, 5 to 10% of my volume, and it would probably benefit me to do so. I think I got a little bit um, jaded because the first like 150 games I played there, I just like, I couldn't even cash, let alone win a tournament. And so I just like stopped playing. And obviously that was very short sighted because now I've been winning over the last couple of months over another 100, 100 game sample, right? Um, so that was very silly of me. But I'll, I'll definitely be playing more on Chico next year for sure. Same with Iggy as well. Okay, so on ACR. Oops. This is what it's looked like since I reset my my graph in June of 2022. Very swingy. Um, I guess I can take solace in looking at this going like, okay. You know, I'm a slightly losing player lifetime on ACR. Down 200 buy-ins, like whatever, you know? 200 buy-ins is a you know, a couple weeks of poker 
for most poker players, like, not a big deal. But still want to take it seriously. You can email Chico and get access to be able to stream their games. Yes, yeah, for sure. What's up, LBH? Good to see you, man. <clears throat> I think after probably global is the best side out there. Also, possible ability to play higher and still soft, like the 55s and some 109s. Def look into this. Yeah, for sure. I don't know about 109s, but like the 55-25k that happens daily, I think is like a must play. I've been just like one bulleting them, and I think I'll continue to do that moving forward. So ACR, this was what what did I filter this to being? Oh yeah, 2023. So I lost 15k, almost 16k in 2023 on ACR. Once again, kind of a theme here. Like as my game has improved over the last five to six months, even on the sites that I'm losing on, like we're more or less break even-ish. So there's some progress being made. We just need to see how the next quarter basically goes, see if that that progress continues. Um then I filtered it below 33s, as is the theme, as is majority of my volume. And it's pretty volatile, but minus 100 buy-ins, once again, that's like, you know, a couple days worth of poker. It's not to give myself too much credit, but for lack of a better term as well, uh, break-even. You can call it losing. You could be generous, call it break-even, whatever. It's not a huge deal, basically. Um, but there's some... There's some things to be worked on here. Average buy-in is also hot, like more than double of what I'm normally playing overall. So, you know, there's some volatility in there as well. And like B Big T said earlier, like if you aren't getting top two, top three in some of those bigger field MTTs, your graph is going to look like this, right? And that's an issue. Um, When we look at when I'm playing over 33s, so this is 34s and up, that is literally 85% of my, maybe even 90% if I'm doing the math right, of my losses from 2023 is just higher stakes shots, playing some big field 55s and yeah, it looks like some like 630 satellites and You know, some 66s and 109s and all that kind of stuff. Mostly Sunday grinds, 572 average entries. So big field MTTs, mostly Sundays, where I just wasn't running good enough or maybe I wasn't playing good enough. I can't give myself too, too much credit. But, uh, you know, I'm trying to be impartial here as best as I can, despite my own personal bias of myself. But I think this is proof that we can we can see that there's some volatility here that's that's showing why ACR has not been good to me over the last year and a bit. There's some volatility. It's not even ACR's fault. And some, some of it is not my fault. Some of it is just the math of variance, right? Small sample, less than 300 games accounts for, you know, 85% of my losses, right? Um, once again, if we take out Sundays, still volatile, but break even. Which I will, I'll take break even. <laughs> I'll take fucking break even. What's this big dip? That's nasty. Well, it's the exact same time that scoop happens. So there you go. Um, mad volatile. Mad volatile. But I'll take that over losing 15 grand. You know, so Sunday's just, once again, hitting it home. Sunday's kicked my ass. Sundays kicked my ass this year. If I had one or two like really good Sundays, we'd be singing a whole different tune out of the 50 Sundays that we're going to play. I'm probably, I probably played less than 50 Sundays. I bet you I played like 45 Sundays this year. So that, that even plays more of a role. FR Empire AK. Hey, happy new year. I wish you all the best in 2024. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. You too. And in the gym, hope you post the VOD to YouTube. Good shit this year, DD. Joel V, appreciate it, mate. Yeah, I'll be posting it to YouTube for sure. Um, okay, so we looked at everything but Sundays. And then I just wanted to take a quick look at playing a low average buy-in. But everything below 11s. So that accounts for a third of my volume this year. Um, we're a slight winner. Slight winner. 
So there's an issue there. Uh, I do wonder if my my wanting to just play like those 70 player fields despite them having longer average game time than say on global actually affected my bottom line when I should have used that average game time to just play tournaments with a higher potential um, average profit per game i.e. the thousand player fields like playing those low buy-in thousand player fields as a better use of my time than the low buy-in low average field size which is antithetical to what we're doing on global you know it's kind of weird just because of the way that their games are formatted it can make that big of a difference um in approach and that's why you see here like look it's just like a straight line up that's when i started to play those big fields so yeah um and there is something i wanted to add for whatever reason, I am not winning in 1650s. Most of these are these 1650 4Ks. I'm guessing, yeah, 289. That were, looks exactly exactly spot on. 500 game sample. I truly believe that I am running bad in these 1650 4Ks. I, I, in my heart of hearts, I believe this. That all year long, I was just running so fucking bad in 1650 4Ks. Um, there's just no way that they're that big of a difference in skill level to, to a, to an 11. Um, and I really wanted to show that on my PT4, cause I bet you a million bucks. I am my win rate and my BB 100 do not match, but for whatever reason, PT4 is not working for me. So what are some things that I can say that will help my game? improve or help my profit improve for 2024 on WPN. Caps Coke Dealer. <laughs> what a name. Uh thank you for that tier one sub. Enjoy the fuck out of them seven months. Welcome to DJ Zen, my friend. Happy to have you. Much love. Happy New Year. Uh Globe is your site. No issues with deposits or cash outs. No. No. No issues. Uh, so yeah, what's, what's, what can be learned here? I think um, my game selection, all in all, my game selection on ACR has been poor. And I think um, there's probably a big part of me not... Oh, Jesus. Ten. <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle over here. Cap's Coke Dealer. It's great. It's a great name. I don't know who Cap is, but we'll, we'll keep it between us and the chat. So the cops don't come knocking on your door. Thank you for the 10 gifted subs to a bunch of regulars, too. All the people who won subs are regulars in the chat. So that's, that's beautiful. Thank you so much, man. Much, 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 much love. Very, very generous. Thank you very, very much. Um... Just going back to what we were talking about before. Game selection is poor. I think I think I cannot be treating the ACR games the same way that I treat um, Global or Party Poker because the fields are so much different and the structures are so much different. That's huge, right? Um, I think the, even the, the small fields on ACR have way more regs that are way more competent than on say global or even to some degree party and these structures also are very beneficial to fish in my opinion on party poker and on global than they are um on acr so um to even that out i should probably actually play what i consider to be the games i shouldn't have played a year ago i.e the big fields like i should have a high average field size or higher average field size on ACR day to day um, at a lower average buy-in to help with that volatility. So not playing big field 55s, but playing all the big field sixes and all the big field 11s and most of the big field 1650s and 22s um, where I think that will actually have a better contribution to my average profit. Not a hill I'm willing to die on, but maybe something that I should consider. And then that'll still, my, the small fields that I play on all the other sites, particularly Party, Chico, 
and uh, global will still give me like very consistent profit day to day for when I am experiencing some level of pro of volatility um, on ACR because the ACR average buying is going to be so much so much lower. You know, you know, if I have like a twelve dollar average buy-in on ACR, like even with the big fields, I don't see how I can't make like four or five dollars per game there. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know if Big T is still in the chat. Maybe he wants to dispute that in any kind of way. But um, I think that might be the path moving forward. And we'll see if that ends up being right over the next three to six months. Oh, man, that was a mouthful. There was a lot going on there. Um, I think that's all I wanted to cover shark scope wise, more or less. Can you play eight at eight in your country? Get on there if you can. Shit is wild. Yes. Um, I didn't include eight at eight in looking at any of my stuff. Cause I just started playing there over the last three months. Um, but yeah, my ROI there is insane. It's like, I think I have like a 60% ROI so far there. That's crazy. <clears throat> um, speaking of just as a quick brag. So this is a quick, quick brag and there's nothing educational or reflective to be had in what I'm about to show you. Uh, it's purely to brag. So just, just so you guys are aware. Okay. Um, previous months. As you know, we had a good December. Um, my first break even month on global all year, by the way, pretty sick, pretty crazy. I had an 88% ROI on, on party poker last month and a 45% ROI on, on Chico. And by the way, 27% ROI on ACR. Pretty nice. But look how consistent that is though. Despite having it like 88%, you would think like, Oh, did you win like one tournament for like five grand or something? Nope. Just one, just won everything. I just want like all the small field shit, like top two, top three, and everything. One, 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 second, 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 third, second. Yeah, I thought that was pretty, pretty cute. Pretty cute. Um. Anyway, that's just a brag. To a total aside. Total aside. Yeah, thank you again, Caps Coke Dealer. Thank you so much again for the uh, for the gifts. That was awesome. Great way to start the year. Okay. So back to our little uh, Evernotes situation here. What are my goals for 2024? I'm not going to go crazy deep into this section. Um... I think the more goals I make for myself, the less possibility I have of achieving them. I was looking at my goals that I made last year, and I think there was just too many of them, and I didn't achieve what I wanted to achieve. Um, so I'm going to be setting less goals for this year in hopes that that will contribute towards achieving, having a higher chance of achieving, achieving them. It's cap, not cap. So it might be a Dota related name. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So this year, uh, I want to play about 15% less games. I was, I played 10.7 K. I want to play 9.2 K. I came up with that number because I think, I don't know if my self can control or my impulse control can handle it, but I would like to see if I can play less tables day to day. I average about 12 tables during this, during a stream. And I think. I would benefit greatly from reducing that to nine to 10 tables per stream uh, during the stream. So that's about 15% ish less. Uh, keep my same average buy-in. I'm more than fine with that, especially considering how much growth I need to, to have before I feel like I can be comfortable moving up with the way that re the results were in the last year. Although, like I said, the last four to six months have shown great improvement. Uh, and the goal is to hit $8 a game. I believe I was three or $4 a game. Damn. I closed the shark scope. I was around that before. So more or less, I want to double my ROI 
And at the game selection that I have and the prospective uh, skill level that I, I, I can achieve, I think 40% ROI is, is actually very, very reasonable. Um, if we were talking a higher average buy-in, this would be significantly more difficult, bordering on impossible. But I think at a $20 average buy-in, there's no reason for me not to hit that. Last year, I told myself I wanted to hit a 50% ROI. Um, but I think I just need to be a little bit more realistic in my goal set. And perhaps it won't feel as like as big of a mountain to climb. So I'm kind of finding that in between here and going with $8 a game. And uh, that would end up equaling to about 73k in profit, which... In Canadian is just so beautiful. Let's see, seventy three six hundred USD to CAD. In Canadian, that's ninety seven point six k, which would be amazing, especially when you add the twenty to thirty k that I make per year from ACR. I'm living good at that point, especially if I save my money, which I'm really bad at. But if I can, that's part of my New Year's resolution is to be better with my budget. What was your overall ABI ROI in 2023? It was about an $18 average buy-in and I was making about three or $4 per game, somewhere around there. Um, you can go back in the VOD, but we, we covered that at the beginning of the, the review stream where I made about, I think I made about 30K. Is that what I said? Let me see. Yeah, I netted about 35K, but I made about 20, 28K in 2023 so you know i more or less want to al almost triple my profit which i think is like it sounds like a lot but i think it's super 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 realistic knowing what i know now um we just i just need to be more aware of like the tweaks in my game and also i think um probably the biggest mistake that i made this year was shot taking um I think I think shot taking needs to be timed well. <clears throat> um, and shot taking needs to be more calculated than the way that I had done it this year. So when I shot take it, the, you know, I need to pick the right games. Um, I need to sell the right amount of action and I need to put in the necessary amount of volume. Um, I think this year, like if Scoop comes along and I'm feeling confident again, I probably just won't play any of the 215s at all, unless it's like a 215 one mil. And then even then, uh, probably be incredibly selective about the 109s I play. And then as far as like 55s, only play them if they're like 250K guarantees or more. Um, they need to be like big, big prize pools to make it worthwhile just because of how much Fisher is going to be in there and like how big my ROI is going to be against them as I get deeper into the tournament. So, <clears throat> um, and I think that will have a more positive effect on my profit slash ROI. Cause as you guys saw, when we were, we were looking through my month to month profit between what was it? April and June, I more or less just like didn't make any money. And that was because I was playing games that I was under rolled for, um, and perhaps I wasn't as big of a winner in, and we're also the, the most volatile. So there's like a lot of factors in there that just like really was not benefiting me in any kind of way. On top of the fact that I moved on top of the fact that I got sick. Right. So just like, just really not calculated enough. I think, do you play saddies? And if so, how do you factor into ABI? Uh, I don't really play saddies anymore. No. I think it accounted for like 3% of my volume or something. So, no, don't really have much to say about that. Uh, I'm probably going to play some saddies for the Venom this month, but I'm once again going to be really try trying my best to be really calculated in it. Now, I'm saying all of this. If I had like won a scoop event or something, <laughs> I might not be saying the same thing. So, there is also that to keep in mind as well, right? Um,. I could be just thinking about it too much. I had a conversation about this with 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 Bolero, as you guys, if you guys remember him, Henry. I was talking to him yesterday. And the crazy thing about MTTs is it, it is so hard to properly understand your 
true ROI in MCTs based on just how volatile it truly is. Um, and sometimes you can get overconfident into playing games that you shouldn't, you know? Um, and that can have a really negative impact in your mental. And to some degree, the, the opposite is true as well, right? Um, if you're just like really killing it for, a, for an extended period of time, you might have a really poor understanding of how good you actually are and you're, you might not be actually that good in the first place. And that can have a negative impact on your mental because then you're just like, you know, reducing everything down to variance. So like finding that balance can be really tough. And sometimes you just might be talking shit. You know, there is that gamble aspect of it. So something to think about. So is he still beating the tournaments? Yes. Yes, dude. Chill. Want a day one today? Day two isn't till the 28th. Good luck. Usually when the shot takes tourneys, when they don't feel like big shot takes, I think that's a really good point. Most people I know who binked a big shot take, gave it all back, or go on crazy break-even stretch, playing too big and overconfident afterwards. Exactly. Exactly. Shot takes shouldn't feel like shot takes. So that makes... Further adding on to that, like if my average buy-in is $20 and I decide to play a 215, it's probably not the shot take I want to be taking, you know? You need to reduce that down even more. You know, the shot take should be the 109 where like I don't care about losing the 109. Or, or a 55 that I like never play because it's a 500K guaranteed. Things like that. Shouldn't feel like a shot take, I think is a really, really, really good point. So those are my goals for uh, poker. <clears throat> Sorry, I just got a little tilted from that cavern crew question. It's a really fucking stupid question. But anyway, all right, let's move on. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the goal for 2023. I think these are like very achievable, reasonable goals, especially if I put in this kind of volume, it's a reduced volume from the volume I put in this year. And I think that will help like a bit of a quality over quantity type of a situation while still putting in really good volume. That's more than a lot of like regular poker players put in, but I'm consistent like that. You know, I'm consistent like that for Twitch. Uh, this was a goal I had for 2023. I wanted to hit 150 concurrent viewers did not hit it. I actually have less concurrent viewers this year than I did last year. Why? I'm not sure, but I'll, I'm going to explore that. 52 YouTube videos, so that's about a video a week. Did not achieve that in 2023, which is what I wanted to achieve. I think that would actually greatly help my Twitch stream. Um, did not achieve that at all. Why? Because I'm lazy. Really no other excuse. I'm lazy, so I'm going to do that this year. I'm 100% going to do that this year. And improve Discord? Question mark. I don't have a super like banging Discord chat, but the people that do hang out in my Discord chat are awesome as hell. So I would like to improve that quality for everybody involved in our Discord. And if it happens to help with my growth in my Discord community, I think that would be a huge net positive in general for my channel all around. So I don't know what improving my Discord even means. I've just seen a lot of people with, you know, real bang in discord chats and it's kind of helped their twitch channel as well so we'll have to we'll have to i'll have to explore do some self-reflection on that one I, I have no idea what this even means what what the tangible aspect is to improving this part but we'll look into it like how awesome only as awesome as when danger zone mayo chats in my discord is it a 10 out of 10 and then uh just some really broad goals for for life I want to explore my hobbies a little bit more, focus on my health. I focused on health a little bit this year, not as much as I'd like to. I didn't do any of my health resolutions, so I'm going to be kind of broad because I'm not, I don't want to put that pressure on myself. Um, I did work on my mental health a lot this year. That's a huge, huge, huge success for me. Probably one of my biggest successes of 2023 is uh, I went and got therapy. I've been taking therapy two to three times a month, seeing a therapist and just working on different aspects of my of my mental health and it's truly been a game changer in my self-confidence and um in my life overall so that's probably one of the the biggest positive takes that i have over the last year and i want to continue working on that 
And in turn, my, my bodily health as well, obviously. And I really need to work on my budget. Even though I had a successful year this year and I made good money, I don't have a whole lot of money to show for it. And that's because of poor spending habits. My spending habits have greatly improved compared to 12 months ago. But we got to take it up a notch, so going to work on that. And then extra stuff that I'm just like, I'm not committed to, but I have kind of question marks over things that I've been very interested in. I would love to make a secondary channel for video games, as you guys have heard me talk about the last couple months. Kind of think about maybe like a movie review YouTube channel that I make two or three times a month. I don't know. I don't think I know. Collabs. Um, I would like to figure out how to work with other poker streamers. Like that's such a huge aspect that the whole community is missing. I think we could all benefit each other by working with each other. And we don't really. Nobody really in the community works together. Like, I, I, I don't know why that's the case, but it is. Like nobody really streams together in any equal way or makes YouTube videos together. I think that's something that we're all missing. I, I don't know how to extend that aspect, but I don't know. Those are just question marks. Nothing that I'm hardcore committed to, but there we go. That's everything, chat. Um, I have my Twitch stats up here. I don't, I don't know if I really care to look at them. I don't think there's anything particularly uh, revelationary, let's say. Um, Going to load up my 2023 stats here, I guess. So my average years actually went down by about, uh, looks like 30%. No, 25%. Like whatever. Okay. It says I have 16 followers gained. What happened was, um, somebody bot followed me earlier on in the year for like 10,000 followers. And, uh, so I had to like bot unfollow them back. And it's like super skewed my followers gained this year. I've I have no idea actually how many followers I gained this year. Probably less than a thousand, but uh, I streamed less, so maybe that affected my viewership as well. I streamed about 150 hours less. Um, my watch time is about 30 percent less. That's not good. Uh, my active days are about 20 days less. So. I don't really know if that plays that big of a role. I feel like I want to be more consistent, I think is probably the big one. It's less about hours and more about consistency. So I want to see how consistent I can be in 2024. Don't really want to put in crazy hours. It's a very exhausting, especially when you're playing poker, but being more consistent. Cause like I was really, really confident that my viewer hours, my viewers were going to grow this year. And actually went down. So I'm not really sure what that's about. I gotta work on that. I gotta more self-reflection. We're gonna we're gonna think about that more. And I'm I'm all ears for anybody in the chat who might have any solid ideas about that. Could always try and throw together some random fun heads up streams with other poker streamers, play smaller stakes or whatever. But a fun way to work together. Yeah, true. True, true, true. Not a bad idea. Great work in December, DD. Congrats, Darkwester. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. I got to dry mouth down. All right. I, I think that's everything really. Um, so like a TLDR more or less is, uh, had a profitable year for the second year in a row. It's the same amount of profit that I made the previous year. However, um, when you look at the context between each year, 2023, I was significantly more, um, consistent by orders of magnitude more or less. Uh, I did not make nearly the amount of profit that I had planned. I, I think I didn't even make half the amount of profit that I had planned to make in 2023, but I was way more consistent. And I think that is the, the huge silver lining to that semi gray cloud for 2023. Um, moving into 2024, I'm going to be a lot more intentional with my game selection, particularly on America's card room and to a lesser degree on poker stars. And I will continue to study more in a way that works for me personally, uh, more positively 
to help with that variance and continue in my on my road to consistency um i think also in hindsight as an aside as great as the coaching for profit group was and as much as it changed my professional life for the better and probably saved my career i don't think it was a hundred percent the right way for my own personal growth my attention span just isn't catered well enough to the kind of coaching that was being given to me to the point that i wasn't benefiting to my maximum potential um, I do think the kind of studying I'm doing now where it's a little bit more to my pace and my scheduling has actually played a positive role in my growth and development in poker. And we've kind of seen that over the last six to eight weeks, especially. But I'm going to need to continue grinding in this way over the next quarter to half a year to actually prove that because I might be wrong. Um, so in 2024, I'm just going to be more consistent more intentional and continue to and use 2023 as basically the springboard to develop way better or way more in 2024 okay well that's it for 2023 uh december ended on a great note um eight thousand bucks or just a little shy of that for december for my best month of the year that was pretty fantastic beautiful hopefully that means good things for january and the rest of 2024 uh, like I said at the end of the stream, I feel very grounded. I feel, I feel very uh, contained and controlled, and I, I'm just very, very level-headed, probably more than I ever have been, and that leaves me very optimistic for the rest of this year. We'll see how things go. Hopefully, last year was the building block, like I said, or the springboard, whatever you want to call it going into 2024 uh if you guys like what you heard let me know in the comments down below if you didn't like what i heard if you thought i was kind of going about it all wrong i'm all ears man share share with me your comments as long as it's not hateful as long as it's not hateful i, I don't mind hearing a, a word or two from what you guys have to say and once again let me know your new year's resolutions if you have any if you have any goals for for 2024 especially if it's poker related you can even be a recreational say you want to turn 100 bucks into a thousand or something i'm i'm all ears man it's it's always interesting to see what you guys are going how you're you're going along your journey just as much as i like to share it with you guys so yeah much love twitch.tv slash macdgen links down below for everything in the description i'll see you guys in the next youtube video or hopefully in the twitch poker streets have a good night